Hi everyone, welcome to the first part of the tutorial on It's Never Too Late by Tommy Emmanuel. As always, a quick thank you to my top tier patrons first. The first part of the tutorial will be released on YouTube. For full access to the whole archive, please check out my Patreon page. If you only need the tab or notation file, then click the music notes link down below in the description. It's Never Too Late is a welcome change of pace when it comes to the Tommy Emmanuel songs. After working on a few monster tunes like Somewhere Over the Rainbow and Amazing Grace, I was really looking for something with a bit more repetition and also something a bit more suited to the starting fingerstyle player. While It's Never Too Late still offers few challenges, it is still quite accessible. If you can already play songs like Lewis and Clark, then this might be the most logical step going forward. I've also managed to find alternative fingerings for each section where Tommy uses the thumb over the side of the neck. In this part, we take a look at the intro and the verse. Part two tackles the chorus and the bridge and ending are explained in part three. So no more delays, straight to work. Okay, straight to playing then. The guitar is in standard tuning. We're using a capo at the second fret. Whenever I move up the neck, I'm going to try to count up those two frets uh, to make sure that you're in the exact right spot. And we're also using a thumb pick. There are no special techniques in the song that require one. It's mostly there to add some extra percussiveness to the chorus, I think. Uh, but it is perfectly possible to play the whole song without one. So if you're not used to this, then go ahead and try it without one. Let's have a look at the intro first. As always, all the explanation will follow on the other side. And with that hammer on, we're already leading into the first verse. So we're working mostly around the same chord voicing, just moving the bass line a little bit around. We start out second fret on the A string, using, sorry, using the index finger, fourth fret on the D string, using the ring finger, open G string, so make sure you put those fingers nice and upright, don't let them fall flat because you will mute that G string in there. Then after that, open G string, third fret with the middle finger on the B string, and you will also need the open E string once in a while. So make sure the posture is all the way upright, no thumb over the neck because you will mute those two open strings. We start out by playing the A string and the B string at the same time. And the main thing to watch out for if you're using a thumb pick is you have to play the bass line really, really light throughout the whole song. Maybe just pick it up a little in the chorus. So if you play that bass line, just really lightly with the thumb pick. There is no muting in the intro, so you're just leaving everything open. A string, B string at the same time, alternating to the D string with the thumb pick. And then we are alternating between bass notes and arpeggiated notes, thumb pick on the D string. Open G string with the index finger, back to the A string, and then with the middle finger you play the B string still holding down the third fret. Back to the D string and back the open G string. So after the D string, you always follow that up with the G string. After the A string, you always follow that up with the B string. So first beat together, and then alternating. And we repeat that same block exactly the same way a second time around. So first time, and second time. Then you move up the index finger to the third fret and you play the exact same thing. With just one variation, the second time around, you play the open E string instead of the third fret on the B string. So the first time, the exact same picking pattern, back to the B string, G string, second time, to the high E string, and back to the G string. Those two bars back to back. You 
you drop the index finger back down to the second fret, we're going to play the exact same arpeggio as in the first bar, only on the first beat we are going to play the low open E string instead of the second fret on the A string. So low open E string together with the B string and straight back to the A string and we stick to the A string now. So just one time, low open E string, A string and stick to the A string. Back up to the third fret with the index finger. This time that open E string is all the way in front in the first repeat, let's say, of, of that small section. And that is where the intro stops. We're going to round that out with just an open B string, hammering on to the third fret, and this will lead us into the first verse. Uh, those last two bars, starting on that low open E string. And then you will drop back down to the second fret to start the first. Let's play the whole intro really, really slowly one more time before we head into that first verse. finger to the third fret on the B string and then we head into the first verse. Let me play through the first verse just one time, already a little bit below concert speed. straight into the chorus. Really short, there's quite a lot going on here. So we start out by playing that hammer on from the open string to the third fret, but you're still holding down the rest of the chord. So you come out of that uh, intro with, let's say the last two bars. And then you just drop down the index finger back to the second fret. You keep down the ring finger and you're basically just putting back the middle finger down where it has been throughout the intro. So you end up with this in the beginning of the verse. You play the A string and the B string at the same time and you hammer on to the fifth fret with the pinky. Alternate to the D string with the thumb pick and then you play an open E string while you keep the note, the pinky, you have to keep that ringing out. This is the same pitch the open E string and the fifth fret on the B string is the exact same pitch. So together, hammer on, bass note, open string, bass note. You're going to see that happen a lot in this tune. Most of the time you only play two notes at the same time whenever there's a chord change and from that point on it's always alternating melody note in between the bass notes. You're seldom playing two notes at the same time in this song. So just on the first beat, remove the pinky again. You're still holding down the third fret. Back to the D string. So really slowly that first section. And then you, we move to an E minor chord. There's a chord change, so we play two notes at the same time just in the very first beat. Open E string, open B string. Now, there are quite a few ways in which Tommy plays this small part. 
I like this one best. So it's just melody note, bass note at the same time, followed up not just by a bass note with a thumb pick, but a soft strum with the back of the nails. Back to an open bass note, then you pick an open G string and another soft strum with the back of the nails. This is how it sounds really slowly. Don't whack those strings on that open strum. It's just something to keep the, the timing, the tempo of the song moving. It's not, you don't really need a big open E minor chord here. Just loosely, softly, the back of the nails. That's all you need. Those two B, or let's say those two chords together. This is only the first bar. Then we move back into the same B minor-ish chord shape that we used before. And now the trickiest section of the tune is coming. Tommy pulls something that I never see him do before. Let's have a look at the next bar. You see what, what, I, what I mean? Tommy plays a bass note on the A string, but you can't hear it. He's playing it so lightly that it doesn't actually make a sound. You start out with the exact same chord. So the exact same thing, hammering on to the fifth fret, to the D string, to the open E string, and this is where the trick comes in. Tommy lifts the index finger, not completely off the A string, but just releases the pressure, and he quickly picks this note and just gets a muted bass note out of it. He does this because he has to move really quickly with the index finger to the high E string. The reason why he's doing this is, I guess, because he doesn't want to play that bass note and cut it really short. So what does he do? He doesn't play it at all. But he does keep the alternating bass movement going. So you have to pick this muted bass note as lightly as possible, preferably making no sound at all. So you're not meant to play like this big muted bass note in here. If you can't hear it, then that is the best uh, result you can hope for. So you're probably really zoning in on this now and you can still hear that muted note, but go back and check when I played through the verse the very first time, I did the same thing. Did you remember or could you remember that, that one muted note in there? Because I never heard it when Tommy does it. But then again, he picks it so lightly that there is almost no sound at all. But you can see the pick going for the string. So this is what he does. Really lightly on that muted A string. And then as soon as you have played that muted string, you move the index finger to the second fret on the high E string. So just moving it straight down. Straight down to the high E string and you just alternate with the thumb pick back to the D string, still holding down the fourth fret and you are playing that bass note. After that D bass note, you re-pick that second fret with the index finger and you pull off really quickly. Removing the pinky and you're going again for a low open E string. Third fret on the B string, bass note, removing the third fret as well and going for an open B string. Low open E string and then Tommy picks two open strings, G string and D string at the same time. And again, does one of those quick strums with the back of the nail across basically the D string, G string, and you can also pick the B string if you want to. This is the trickiest bar of the whole song. If you get this down, everything else is a lot easier. That's all what happens in the end. Picking up and stroking back down with the fingers. Up, down. See, so really lightly up, down. And again, not busting out that chord, just a quick light brush with the back of the nails.
ending up on a G chord with an added ninth, ring finger third fret on the low E string, middle finger second fret on the G string. Before we head there, let me play those two B minor bars back to back with each other. So, was already the next bar. So, as I said before, on the chord change, bass note and melody note together, in this case, low E string and G string. Going with the thumb pick to the D string and then playing an open B string. And then just two bass notes without anything in between. You remove the middle finger and you just pick that G string really quickly before switching to the next chord. Moving to what looks like an A minor 7th chord, open A string, middle finger 2nd fret on the D string, open G string, 1st fret with the index finger, and we're quickly going to pull off to an open string, again on the chord change, bass note and melody note together. A string and B string in this case, and you pull off to the open string right away. Thumb pick to the D string, and then you switch the index finger to the second fret on the G string for the next melody note. See, so index finger first fret, pulling off, bass note, second fret on the G string, thumb pick back to the A string. Removing the index finger altogether, plucking an open G string. Back to the second fret on the D string with the thumb pick. And then we switch back to the index finger on the G string while moving to a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. So that section on the A minor chord. Tommy heads for the D chord with the thumb over the side of the neck. If you can manage the thumb over the side of the neck, then you can go for this fingering, which is by far the most efficient one to go for, which is thumb over the side of the neck, second fret, index finger, second fret on the G string, and then Tommy adds in the ring finger on the third fret on the B string. I actually think it's a lot easier if you can manage to use the middle finger on the third fret on the B string, because this puts you in a perfect position to head into the next chord. You can just leave the middle finger where it is. If you go for Tommy's fingering with the ring finger, you will have to switch around for the next chord. So you will see me play this most of the time, using the middle finger instead of the ring finger. The arpeggio, we'll get to that in a second. If the thumb over the side of the neck is hard for you, you can go for, let's say, this option, but the moving around and getting to the next chord will be a bit more difficult. But it's perfectly possible to play this. To go for index finger, second fret on the low E string, middle finger, 2nd fret on the G string, ring finger, or even pinky on the 3rd fret on the B string. So you're not uh, obligated to play the thumb over the side of the neck. Using the index finger works just as well. So one more time, with the thumb over the side of the neck. Or with, let's say, the index finger. This is a perfectly reasonable uh, option as well. Then we move into the D chord. Now I'm going to stick to the thumb over the side of the neck just because this is the most efficient fingering going into the next chord. The arpeggio is rather simple. So you have that one uh, uh, melody note, second fret on the G string that is played in front of the beat. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So, the arpeggio is always the same thing, bass note, bass note, and then, in this case, after the D string, you play the B string, and 
after the low E string, you play the G string. A bit slower. If I spell it out, then it's D string, B string, E string, G string, D string, B string, E string, G string. You play this roughly two times. Three, four. And then on the fourth beat, you remove the middle finger, you play the bass note together with the open B string, and you hammer on to the third fret again, leading into the second part of the verse. We know that pickup from the intro. So uh, those two bars back to back, starting from the G chord. you play the low E string, hammer on and round out the bar with another bass note on the D string. Those are four bars back to back really slowly. second part of the chorus, which is, good news, almost exactly the same. The only thing that changes in that very first chord, instead of starting from the B minor chord, again we just move up the index finger to the third fret and we play the exact same thing, including that one muted bass note and switching really quickly to the second fret. You'll see in a second. So this is the second part of the verse. Up until that point, this it's exactly the same, apart from maybe one small variation. The second E minor chord is not a full E minor chord. Tommy drops down the index finger from the third fret to the second fret and removes the middle finger, but he keeps the ring finger on the fourth fret, giving you an E minor chord with an added ninth degree in there. So this is what you get in the first bar. Keep the ring finger on the 4th fret. I'm using the same picking pattern now. E string with the B string, strum. The exact same thing as before. There are also versions where Tommy plays just a full strum down with the thumb pick in this case, giving you this. It's a little bit harder to do getting that from nicely even without any spikes in terms of volume uh, is I think is pretty hard to do uh, so I stick mostly to the bass pattern but if you want to include this big E minor chord then go ahead it's all the difference in terms of technique it's just strumming down with a wide strum not just one big bang but just really brushing or opening the whole chord and then following it up with the exact same technique as before. So what I'm going to keep playing in this tutorial is this. But you could also add just a full strum on that first beat. One more time through the whole thing. And when you end up on that last uh, bass note, F-sharp, you don't actually have to play the whole chord. Tommy heads for the middle finger on the second fret on top, hammering on with the pinky to the third fret, fifth fret, and then plays the seventh fret together with a small bar across the fifth fret and 
To start out with, Tommy only plays the 5th fret on the B string and the 7th fret on the high E string. So you end up in that last section. And then you add in an open A bass string underneath there. One more time, without using the thumb for that last bass note. So the same thing going for the index finger. And in that case, you have to use the ring finger and the pinky to play that melody note on top. Third fret going, sorry, second fret going to the third fret. So one more time with the thumb. And in that case, you can go for a full D chord and even include the B string in that first hammer on before moving up. If you go for the index finger, that's not possible. Adding into the chorus. Few choices to make, thumb over the side of the neck, no thumb over the side of the neck, but I think the biggest challenge of all will be that one muted missing bass note in between there. Uh, I found that really difficult to incorporate into my technique because you're so used to playing that boom chick alternating bass pattern all the way through. Anyway, let me play through this first verse really slowly one more time, then we're going to have a look at the chorus. That was all for the verse then. Take all the time you need to get this into your fingers. In part two, we pick up the picking pace a little by going over the chorus. I'll see you there.